Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today we're going over a breakdown for Giyu. Now, Giyu is quite a popular character, which makes sense because he's quite a straightforward character. Every one of his special moves kind of does everything you would want them to do. His water wheel reaches really far, it starts combos, it's advantageous on lock, it's really just amazing, and then he has his regular special move, which just does a lot of damage and has a hard knockdown where you can stand there and build some meter. And he also has this parry that works as a good invincible move and it leads to a really cool long combo. He's quite a simple combo and he doesn't have anything like any complex mix-ups or pressure. He's kind of just a... You do the fundamentals of the game and you win. And he does them well. So, um, with that said, I think let's just get into the basics of the breakdown. His regular attack strength is pretty average, it does okay damage. There's nothing too much to talk about with these, they're not good or bad. His aerial attack string is actually kind of interesting in that it puts him in the air, but it's not really useful because neither of his special moves connect in the air on an opponent unless you do a delayed one like I did there, but that's nothing different than you would do if you did a grounded combo attack. I mean combo string. So yeah, I'm not sure, quite sure what the point is there. And then his grounded combo, you know, just as normal, it has a bit of a knockdown, does some more damage, but it's not really something you could be using too often. Okay, his tilt attack is also quite average. I think I'm going to say that a lot. He's a very bland, you get what you, like, he's very simple combo. He's a very simple character, like, oh, his armor attack? Well, um, it has armor and it has okay range and it leads to an average length shortened combo. But uh, that's about it. It does actually have pretty good range. It reaches a bit closer than, actually has a deceptive hitbox. That piece of wind is not part of the hitbox, even though it goes through. Sabito, and sometimes you are a bit far away that you'll need to like either do a water wheel or dash cancel in to get a combo, but um, doing a water wheel will always lead to good damage in a combo. Oops, that's not going to land the whole thing. You can do something like this. Some decent damage off of it, but yeah, it's a pretty average armor attack. Well, actually, it's a, I would say it's above average. It's decently fast. The charge up is oh, quite slow, but it has decent range. Maybe deceptive range. <laughs> His aerial tilt attack is also kind of weird. It's nothing excellent. It's kind of weird how a lot of characters do like a roll at the end, but he just like is standing. But that makes its hitbox surprisingly better because it can hit at the very last second of where he goes. Because a lot of characters would be like rolling by now, but because he's still got his sword out, he gets to hit them and you get a full combo from it. Unfortunately, it does just lead to a red combo, so you're not going to get too much. But it's a pretty okay dive kick. His grab is also kind of average. It has decent range, but nothing ridiculous like Nezuko or Hinokami Tanjiro. But it does above average damage, I think. Yeah, yeah that's above average damage. Not the biggest, I don't think. But it is a pretty decent chunk of damage for a grab. And it leaves you quite close, so you can, you know, go for an armor attack on wake up or a water wheel, whatever you like. Um, I think those are uh, all of his normals. Let's talk about his specials, or and just briefly on his movement. His movement is pretty okay. His aerial um, sidestep is like very, it's a very straight line downwards, but it is kind of good that it takes him downwards because he does have a, oh yeah, I didn't talk about his aerial attack string. He actually has three hits on his aerial attacks, which is pretty unique. And so that means if he does hit the opponent with it, he has a lot of time to hit confirm into a combo, if he wants to do that. Um, which can lead to some pretty cool damage, or he can, you know, just go into a full combo from it. Very cheaply for very good damage. And what I was going to say with his um, sidestep that kind of brings him down, you know, in a decent line. It's not straight down like um, Zenitsu, but it like takes him downwards as he can jump sidestep into his attacks, and then you get them all to hit, and then he gets like a free launcher. And being able to get a combo off of a jump sidestep is really cool because, you know, obviously sidesteps have invincibility, so it's kind of an evasive way of... It's an oppressive... It's an offensive, evasive way of attacking. It's, you can dodge things and you also get a good combo for it. So, that's pretty cool. Now for his special moves. So, as we said before, his base, his special one, or his standing special, neutral special, whatever you call it, is just this awesome looking, I shouldn't say awesome, it's probably, I shouldn't say it's just, it's awesome. It's one of the coolest looking special moves in the game, Constant Flux, where he just has this massive dragon spinning around him of water. 
and it does really good ch um, chunk of damage. It's about the same as uh, Rengoku's Fire Lion thing, a little bit less, and it takes a little bit more time. That's the one thing that kind of sucks about this special move, is it needs to get all four hits to do a decent chunk of damage, and it can take a little bit of time to do that, about a quarter of the yellow combo counter. So you do have to make sure you're paying attention to that when you're doing your combos, that you do have enough time to land it in your combo, like I'll probably do it here, and I'll have just enough time to get it and get the hard knockdown, so just make sure you're paying attention when you're using it. But it does good damage, and it's very good that you're not locked into it, you can dash cancel at any point, or you can jump cancel it if you're like, oh god, the opponent's gonna punish me or something, or you know, sidestep out of it, you can do literally whatever you want. And what's good about that is it is a very damaging way for him to combo into his ultimate. And you just have to delay it a little bit, don't cancel it instantly, because you'll just screw it up and waste a bunch of meter, but you can combo into your ultimate that way. In the air it works basically the exact same, because he just dashes onto the ground. I think it does the exact same damage, right? 1918 and 1913. Oh, it does a little bit more damage, but from that initial hit, I guess. So <laughs> it does like a tiny, tiny bit of extra damage, but nothing to pay attention to. It's just an aerial version. It's good that he can add that into his, you know, movement. It's a good way of... I guess he doesn't move as far forwards on this one. See, he's missing the point the whole time, but if I do my aerial version, he kind of dashes in. So that can be kind of useful. Um, you know, to get some pressure going, it's kind of like a dive kick. And you can jump in, get a combo. It's pretty cool stuff. I've never thought about doing that until I started making this video. <laughs> now, his tilt special is his water wheel, and I'm sure everyone knows about infamous water wheels. It's mainly Tanjiro's, but I think Gyo's is more of an offender. So it has really amazing range, probably more range than Tanjiro's now, because Tanjiro's got nerfed. So it reaches, like, past round start position, and if you're just a little bit closer than round start, you'll get all three hits. And if you're a little bit further, it, you might just get one hit, but it's a ridiculous range for a special move of its caliber. And what do I mean by that? Well, it starts combos for free. You can just go straight into buttons and then that combos. It is advantageous on block, so advantageous that it's a true block string, which does kind of suck because then you do have to delay your attacks to make the opponent, to make it a frame trap. But if you just mash buttons, and as long as you don't screw it up like I just did then, the opponent just has to keep blocking. This as if it's a true attack string, it's just kind of ridiculous. That it starts combos, it reaches really far, and it's advantageous on block. Like, what what could, more could you want? And it has a really good hitbox, because it's a water wheel. So it hits in the air, it hits behind you, it hits in front of you. It's awesome. And the grounded version is actually a lot better than the aerial version, because it has way better range. The aerial version just kind of goes straight down and doesn't reach very far. But it still has the same properties, that so it starts combos and is advantageous on block. And uh, yeah, basically this is kind of just a really brainless tool. You can just throw it out whenever you want and you can put it in your combos. You can put it at the beginning of your combo, you can put it at the end of your combo, because it's good at continuing and ending combos. It's kind of ridiculous how good this special move is. And on top of that, it's also a restand. So if my opponent is in the air, say I'm like, about to end my combo in constant flux, I can go in for this, and the opponent is standing up, and depending on how many hits I get, it can actually be a kind of advantageous reset, because the opponent's in the air and they're not expecting me to go for a grab as soon as they land, and then he gets awesome resets on the top of on top of a decently damaging combo. So they do something like this. Oops, wait, I need to do a bit shorter than that. Whoop. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, this should work. And then you go for Water Wheel, and what the heck? Okay. Make your combo a little bit shorter than I am, but it's a very effective way of using resets. I've used it online quite a bit. But the opponent isn't expecting it, so you can end your combo early, go for a grab, and then that just adds a huge chunk of damage to a very cheap combo, even if you just want to do, you know, full attack string into it. Or if the opponent's just in the air, because maybe you've caught them with an aerial attack string or something. Or, yeah, whatever. If the opponent's airborne, this will restand them and you can go for a reset. And not only is it just good for a reset um, on aerial opponents, it's also equally good at air resets on grounded opponents, because it has so much advantage. It has so much advantage it can even go into attacks, and as as you can see, I'm mashing the attack button, there's still, but, there's, but there's still quite an amount of a gap or a delay between my attacks and the water wheel. 
So that little bit of a delay can kind of make up for a really scary situation with the grab here because they're like, oh, you know, there's quite a bit of a delay before they attack. So I'm not going to like press buttons or anything. This is if the opponent's blocking. So if I do this, and then the opponent thinks I'm going to go for more attacks, because, you know, it's advantageous on block, but then it ends up just going for a grab instead of an attack. It's really, really scary stuff. Yes, it's slightly reactable, reactable, particularly on block, but on hit, there's almost no way that someone's going to react to this. So if you end up having a combo and you just end it in a water wheel, you can end it in a water wheel and go for a grab, and then you get a big chunk of damage at the end of the combo. It's just so, so good. It's, so <laughs> it's crazy. how he And he has an above average damage grab. So going for a grab is a pretty scary option for the opponent. And then obviously, oh, ooh, what was that? Obviously, instead of a grab, if the opponent tries to mash against your grab, you can just go for an armor attack and then get, you know, a short combo for your armor attack. It's a really scary option. It's a really good reset. Now for his tilt attack, which is probably the most interesting thing about Gyu, um, or like the most unique, because, you know, water wheels and this massive dragon are really powerful and, and really unique, but are really interesting, but his dead calm is the most unique part about him. Um, oops. So I put the opponent on to attack me. Just do something predictable. Okay. As you can see, you can counter anything the opponent does, as long as it's not an ultimate or a grab. And then you can get a full combo on them, and you can get some really beefy damage off of this thing. We'll talk more about it when we get into the combo portion. But, oh, wow, really. So like that was just a simple random, I was just doing random special moves and attacks and that was a really big chunk of damage and you can get over half health with combos from this thing, it's really ridiculous. And, oops. So it just acts as you would expect to parry, if the opponent attacks you it's kind of like a better version of your like just guard or whatever, sort of just defense. Um, because it lasts for a little bit longer, it is more punishable though, actually a similar amount of recovery frames. Just a little bit longer, but it lasts for a lot longer and you get more damage from it because it has an attack into it. They both start blue combos, but but this one has an activation damage if I can get Sabido to hit me. As you can see it does yeah, 16,000 at the start. And you can get big juicy damage from it. But that's basically that special move, you can't do it in the air. It's very good for when the opponent's attacking you and you push them back and then you counter their last hit. Or if the opponent is trying to, maybe if you've broken a combo and the opponent's going to dash in on you, you can just do this, catch their dash in. It's a very, very useful special move and you get a lot of damage from it. And basically whenever you hit this and the opponent doesn't have the sidekick meter to break out of the combo, that's when you just let it all loose and spend everything because you're going to get a big chunk of damage. Okay, now that we are done with all of his special moves let's just talk about his combos and pressure and stuff so combos with gear are honestly pretty simple because you're just going to be doing a, whoop, a few attacks into a water wheel and you can do like whatever combination you'd like you can do a few attacks into a water wheel a few attacks into constant flux and then you'll get the hard knockdown you'll get over 3000 damage which is pretty good damage for a simple bnb and uh yeah bob's your uncle you've got some good stuff obviously you have options like going for um resets with the water wheel so if i do a full attack string into water wheel full attack string i have enough time to go into water wheel and then i have my resets where i can go for a grab or an armor attack there and if i want to yeah, really, I can probably best not to do a full attack string into this because that will do less damage. But yeah, oh, combos into a water wheel, combos into constant flux is the basics. The basis of basically every combo you're gonna do with Gyu. You can change things up, but honestly, you're probably just gonna be wasting meter. Like you can combo into constant flux by like dashing up, but um. That can be pretty hard because they take a lot of time. <laughs> so 
As you see, that combo did do some good damage, but took a little bit of meter and I didn't get a hard knockdown from it. So really, I just stick with your water wheel into some attacks, into your constant flux. It's just the best thing. And then if you do have time at the end of the combo, like I do now, well, I can just go for a reset and go in for a grab. If you are having a short red combo, you just do like three attacks into your constant flux. You're going to get your hard knockdown, you'll build your meter back, you're standing on the opponent so you can summon a support if you'd like. Same goes for his aerial tilt attack, he gets a red combo, so just do a few hits into constant flux, you'll get your chunk of damage. Obviously you also have the option of going for like a few more hits into a water wheel and going for your reset there. That can lead to more potential damage, but obviously because it's a reset, it's not guaranteed, but if they do fall for it, that's like half of Sabito's life right there from one armor attack. And if you want to combo into your ultimate, it's basically the exact same thing. Like I said, Ryu is quite a simple character. But um, yeah, just do a few attacks into a water wheel, into a few attacks, into a constant flux. And then when the opponent's bounced into the air, you just wait a little bit until they start, until they're at the peak of their bounce. Then you pop, pop your ultimate and they'll land in your activation dome. And then, boom, they get hit for a bunch of damage. Um, it's nothing as ridiculous as if you just did, you know, a bunch of specials into each other. It's actually quite hard to link his into each other though because of, you know, the airborne version of Constant Flux. But even this will do more damage than a full combo into it. But just make sure you practice the delay into the ultimate because that can be something you mess up online. Uh, especially with, you know, awful lag online. But yeah, comboing ult into an ultimate is really simple. If you're getting a long combo from this, I won't spend too much time because it's a little bit impractical to show combos from this in training mode because... You see that was a simple combo there, did 4000 damage and honestly this is the opportunity that you probably want to pop an ultimate or um, just spend as much meter as you can. Well, Excuse me. Go in for constant flux, because you have enough time in this blue combo, you can go in for stuff like this. More easily. See, that does a little bit more damage. But yeah, you can pop in your supports if you've good su combo supports. You can pop an ultimate, you can pop whatever, you've got a lot of time for those combos. Um, if you're in boost mode, because these combos are so simple, you can obviously do stuff like this, but just a few attacks into water wheel and a few attacks into the full attack string, and then you get this full decent damage combo for only a single bar. So like 3600, that's pretty good for, you know, single bar. Um, but obviously it also makes his regular combos more damaging as well, because everything just does more damage. And when you're in surge mode, uh, it's a little bit hard for you to do powerful stuff in surge mode because you can't really link his specials into each other very easily because, you know, um, constant flux puts the opponent in the air. So you kind of do have to do some timing if you want to do that. Or else you'll go the wrong way like I have now. Okay, let me see if I can practice that without surge mode. It is really hard. So in surge mode, I recommend you honestly just go for regular combos or just spend meter in other ways, like by doing... Just like a lot of water wheels. Into your water constant flux. So unfortunately, it does have a little bit of a harder time in surge mode than most characters, like, you know, Tanjiro or Ren Goku can just smash special moves. But he can still get some stuff done. And uh, I think that is about it for his combos. We can t quickly talk about pressure, but there's not too much pressure stuff to talk about with Giyu. The only um, gap he has where he can cancel into a grab is off of the last hit of his attack string. Then he can empty cancel his run into a grab. Let me turn this off. I don't like them talking to me. <laughs> um, none of his special moves are particularly good for like, are ridiculously good for pressure, except for obviously his water wheel. Well, actually, what am I talking about? His dead calm is, I guess that's not really for pressure, it's more for countering your opponent's pressure. But, um, yeah, when you're doing pressure on the opponent, basically you're just going to be mixing up doing your water wheel into a grab, or water wheel into more attack. Ah, oh, that's weird when that happens. Water wheel into more attacks, or water wheel into an armor attack. 
you just get to mix up super super easily if you want to throw in a constant flux just to like make them feel weird because they're like oh i've never seen you do that before that's a good way of you know throwing them off guard and you can kind of cancel it into a grab if you'd like maybe after the last hit because of all that water on the screen it's really hard to see but yeah he's got simple combos he's got simple pressure but if you understand the fundamentals of this game, it can be a really scary character because, you know, if you're just playing well, he can do everything well. So it makes him really scary. He doesn't really have any downsides other than the fact that he's kind of simple. But that's not really a downside. That just makes it easier to do well with him. He has decent damage. He has decent pressure. Well, actually, he has really good pressure thanks to his water wheel. And he has just combos he can get off of anything. He's YOLO stuff, like his water wheel, where he can just throw out whenever. He's got an okay grab, he's got an okay armor attack. Like, you play the game well, you'll play Gyu well. And he'll he'll play it really well, because he's got no downsides. But, this may have been a bit of a shorter one, but Gyu's... Yeah. yeah. That's it. <laughs> Thanks for watching this breakdown. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy playing Gyu if you're a Gyu main. Thanks for watching this video, and I might see you in another one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.